K4HNR, KQ4GWP. K4HNR, I hear you. I'm mobile. Not sure if you can hear me. I hear you, Connor. Thank you. We made it up here. Can you pass a message to David Matheson and let him know that Tim and Nathan made it to Girton, KQ4GWP. Tim and Nathan made it to Garden. Awesome. Yep, I'll tell David. Y'all be safe out there. Tim, Tango, India, Mike, Tim and Nathan. Thank you, Connor. Thank you for DWP clear. Hey, y'all be good. Uh, K4 SNR. And that's good news, folks, because that is one of the areas we have not heard a single person out of in Gurkin. And we've had a couple of requests, and uh, uh, one of the people there that was just talking was one of those people requesting information for Gurkin. So I'm glad you guys were able to connect. Thank you. So there you heard it. We have some good news out of North Carolina. A, an area we haven't heard from in a few days has just come across, and, and uh, it was two brothers talking to each other saying, to pass some wellness check information along that uh, some people were okay up there. Uh, and this is, this is the W4HTP repeater. It's being internet broadcasted through Broadcastify. So a lot of people are able to tune in and listen. Uh, the highest I saw was up to 2,600 listeners. It's, it's about 1,800 right now. Uh, I'll put the link in the description so you can go listen for yourself. But these guys have been nonstop passing back where to get food and water where to get uh, uh, gas for the uh, people that are trying to get out there and help people and uh, just passing wellness check and, and good information along. They're also coordinating with EOC and passing along wellness check information to them. And these guys are just, these are the real deal. These guys are the heroes. They're out there. Uh, at, at the, I mean, like I think it was the very next day after the, uh, after the storm kind of passed that they got on the air and they have been, they have not gotten off the air since then. They've just been nonstop passing traffic back and forth, doing what they can to help these people, and they need it. Uh, I'll also include a fun little ranty bit where uh, Net Control Dan K2DMG, he's the one who has been on since the start of this whole thing um, that I've heard. And uh, there's uh, plenty of other hams that have been on there, that been on there this whole time, but uh, he has a little ranty bit going on about the uh, the cellular walkie-talkies, and uh, I couldn't agree with him more. They Those will not work in a situation like this where there is no grid, it will not work. And uh, it's, it's just great to hear other hams feel the way that I feel about that. They are a tool, they have their place, um, but this is not their place. That is, is extensive as amateur radio. As we saw during this, uh, this tragedy, a wire and a radio and a battery work. An antenna on a small handheld radio that produces RF, not an LTE signal, looking for a cellular signal, plain and simple, works. So don't, don't fall for these things that you see online that say, oh, this thing's going to work in, in natural disasters and all that. That's all cellular-based Rapid radio. Uh, LTE radio signal. And, uh, you know, the nice thing about ham radio, it, it, it's all RF, my friends. It, uh, it goes out, and uh, if somebody hears you, we can all talk. And uh, thanks to this repeater uh, with backup power, we have been able to do that and uh, get uh, signals in and out of the affected area. So uh, from a cheap $25 Bofang radio uh, to the most expensive uh, Kenwood and uh, ICOM radio equipment uh, that some of us own, uh, we all start somewhere, and if it's with a $25 Bofang and it gets you the emergency communication that you need, then it is what it is, and uh, it's still amateur radio. So, uh, folks, if uh, you know people, uh, especially those folks that have been listening online, I mean, we're already at thousands of people listening online this morning. If uh, you're not an amateur radio operator, I uh, highly suggest you look up your uh, local ham radio club, and most of them offer uh, classes, and it's not a long class. I know Airedell County, they do a week class for the technician uh, for the technician test. They, they, uh, they teach you what you need to know to pass the test, and, uh, you know, the best training you'll ever get on how to talk on a radio is actually listening to the radio and talking to uh, the, the members of the amateur community, and uh, you will learn. So, you know, it's uh, just something to put out there that uh, nothing will ever beat uh, the 120-year-old amateur radio uh, the same technology that was used in a 1950s Heath kit can talk across the world today when your $1,500 cell phone can't. 
So that's just, just a little PSA for everybody out there listening. K2DMG, net control. That's K1JU, going to add my two cents that was unasked for. Um, I wanted to, so I've recently been uh, getting into the, uh, the LoRa setups, uh, the, specifically the 915, 33 megahertz band. Uh, that is something that a lot of people are not really playing with as much as they should. Uh, the biggest thing that it, that it uh, offers is the ability to send text messages over uh, over short range, and you can provide radios or non hams can use uh, LoRa radios specifically through the Mesh Tastic system to uh, provide. Uh, text messages back and forth. It works as sort of a community setup. And one of the other benefits, because it is a mesh network, the more people that use it, the more robust it is and the farther your message will go. Yeah, I've actually uh, seen one of those systems in play there. I thought it was actually pretty neat. And uh, the more people that are on it, the wider the network. Um, so they're all linked together through a mesh network. Yeah, it's a uh, it's pretty neat setup. Um, but it takes some ingenuity and uh, people to get into a new a new type of technology. Um, while I see it, I see its usefulness, especially in a situation like this, uh, for communities uh, to stay uh, connected with each other. Uh, you know, example where. Uh, with this big tree road and uh, Long Branch Road where they're cut off, uh, that that was something that w would really work for that community, you know. Uh, and then if there was an amateur radio operator in that community that could get the, the, their word out to the masses, uh, you know, it, uh, it would all work together nicely. <laughs> I was just shutting everything down when, when that, that conversation came up, and I feel like I had to record it and, and include uh, parts of it. So... Uh, Ham radio is what's going to help you here, not some magical radio service that claims it can work anywhere. So these guys are the real heroes. Uh, keep listening to them. Uh, keep finding out what you can here, and and just uh, let's just hope that uh, everybody gets through this and uh, makes it out on the other side. This is the Brocam saying seventy three.